Good morning, GTS Retail Partners, and welcome to our Monday edition of the GTS Retailer to Publisher webinar series. This is a, a weekly, twice weekly normally series of uh, videos that we do where we give you the opportunity as retailers to discuss, ask questions of our, our vendor partners. And today we've got uh, Don Rents from Chessex Manufacturing. We're really excited about some of the new products they have coming up here, including their new Borealis Luminary Dice. I don't wanna to take too much from Don, so I'll let him talk about that. But just uh, in case you're new with us and you haven't used Zoom before, there is um, just a brief instruction here for you. Uh, you can see if you, if you roll your mouse over the screen or if you hit the three dots on your phone up in the corner, you'll see that there are some, uh, in, some controls that come up down along the bottom. One of them is a chat feature. If you click on that, it'll open a chat window on the, on the side of your screen or on your screen. And then you'll have the option of messaging either all panelists, which is Don and myself, or all panelists and attendees. And that gives everybody the opportunity to see the question. I will be monitoring the, uh, the chat um, while Don is speaking so that if, if something comes up during the presentation that we can address, we'll, we'll take care of it there or we'll wait until the end to get, that, to get those questions answered. But please do feel free to engage. That's part of the, the primary purpose of these uh, webinars is to get you engaged with the vendors at that level. So please feel free to, to add any questions that you, you might have or comments. Uh, also, for those of you attending not live on YouTube, uh, please like and subscribe so that you're aware of, of new updates uh, when we launch new videos and uh, hit the bell so that you get the notification as well. And then uh, in the video description is a link if you're a retailer and would like to sign up to know when these webinars are happening live, you can sign up with that link and you'll be notified. Uh, so without further ado, I will hand the virtual microphone over to Don Rents of Chessex Manufacturing to tell us all about the fabulous products they've got coming up. So am I on? <laughs> so I guess I'm on right now. So yes, um, you're on. Okay. So anyways, first of all, I want to tell you that there's outside of my window here, there's some construction going on. So if you hear some banging or saws or music, it's, big, it's from that. So there's not much I can do with, about that, but that's just seems to be what happens when you work at home in the, in the COVID era. Um, anyways, um, this um, webinar will be dominated by the new Borealis colors. Um, you may recall that in our last webinar, actually, Scott, if you want to, you could go to your first panel of your wonderful uh, PowerPoint. Uh, 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 there it is, great, okay. Um, that, uh, that I mentioned that we we're, we we're gonna, um, uh, um, that we were running low on the Borealis colors because the factory couldn't come out of the material. And do this, we were changing the stock numbers. Um, at that time, it was unknown um, if putting in the luminary material was going to work. Um, and and, and just the, the biggest problem was, is with, with the uh, material going into, into the dice. Um, and, and there's a more of a chance of leaving a mold mark being visible. Um, but the good, but after they did some testing, they were able to get it to where the mold mark um, issues were not so severe, um, and also that the um, the material itself would not be seen very well in the material in normal light. Um, so, so we thought the trade-off was worth it because we really like the the extra feature of the glow-in-the-dark material, um, and so that's when we we went ahead and made a decision to get um, to get it switched at the time. That we made the, the change of the stock numbers, we weren't sure if it was going to uh, be possible or not. But we also thought it wasn't a bad idea to change the stock numbers, anyways, um, because um, 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 you know because um, um, there could have been a slight change in the color, and that way it solves for the collectors the OG versus the NG issues with, with all the borealis. Um, I just also want to point out that on this release, this is the first time we've had a street date as opposed to a release date. In the past, we would have a date where we can uh, tell distributors, hey, you can send it out to your stores and the stores could you know, you know, th then sell it. But we switched this time to a street date um, to where this, all the retail stores should get it the day of or the day one or two before the actual the day you can sell it. Um, and, um, and, and, and this way, everyone basically has it the same time and then we just sell it. and, and a lot of the distributors that we talked to said that they preferred it this way because more and more people are going to a street date. So we said, great, um, you know, we'll make the switch. Uh, right now, 
all the distributors have had their pre-orders shipped and they're starting to show up at their locations. Um, so uh, they have plenty of time. So, you know, work with your distributor, work with GTS um, to, uh, you know, get the things in so you can start selling them on the 20th of November. Um, on this list, we have a sampler. Um, and in the sampler, there's is two each of the existing colors and three each of the two new colors. So that's how I get to 18, because uh, there's eight different colors. Um, so um, also too, um, it kind of like explains here, kind of like how we do our stock number generation, where we'll have a color number and that just put at the end of the various types of sets. Um, this also applies to the uh, uh, loose dice. So if you have like, like, a, like a number PB1275, P means polyhedral, B means borealis, 12 is a 12 side die and a 75. So therefore, um, 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 you know, that, so you can sort of like tell what the um, stock number is just by knowing the color number. Um, and in this case, the color number for the loose dice are, are the same as the color number for the sets. Um, we can't always do that, but, but we try. So I guess, I guess you go to the next, next screen, which is showing the colors. Um, here we have um, uh, uh, light, uh, light green. Um, and uh, um, on, the three, on the three panels at the top of the pictures, the first, the one on the left of the set is what the dice look like in normal light. Then the middle one is what it looks like we're just in normal light, but with a black light sh showing a UV light. And the, and the one on the right is what it shows like in the dark. Um, so after light smoke, um, sorry, light green comes purple with white. You sw switch the, there you go. Um, and then, um, you know, I should say in all the pictures, the effect really doesn't show completely that well in, um, in pictures, um, uh, especially uh, well, uh, the next one is light smoke, okay? Um, now light smoke is a new color. I mean, it's, it's still smoke. We had a smoke before, but to tell you the truth, um, the smoke with silver in the past has been one of our slower selling of all the Borealis that we, we, we kept in stock. Um, um, so when, when, when we realized we do the luminary, um, I remember when we first made this color, there was a, a raging debate within the company whether, whether the lighter version was better or the darker version was better. And it was, you know, within the company, it was about 50-50. So we went with the darker uh, darker version, um, but I always preferred the lighter version. But at the time, there was another color that we had, we had a, a, about a 50-50 split. And so we decided that I get my way on that color and they get their way on this other color. But anyways, um, so, um, but now with the, now we can do the luminary, the lighter version was much better because it shows through shows through a lot better than than uh, than the darker version. Um, I also think it's a really nice color because it kind of like has swaths of you know clouds through it, so it really looks more like a smoky room. Um, and I'm really quite happy with with this color. Um, then the next one is the one that's probably I think is a star in this group, which is the icicle, which is a new color, and it's not going to replace confetti or a corporal or clear with black, but it is very interesting. It's really hard, next to impossible, to get the effect, um, you know, of this um, in a picture. Um, and uh, so it's kind of like you have to kind of see it to believe it. I mean, maybe, maybe Scott, you could like jump in here. Um, I mean, you, you've seen it. So, 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 what do you think? I mean, how, how can you describe it? So the. Uh... The icicle, I really like the effect of it. I think uh, having that luminary material in there, it has slightly, almost like an opalescent sheen on these on the flakes that are in the uh, that are in the material. So you can you can kind of see an additional depth to the dye. There's there's things in it that that catch your eye, and, and uh, I I like it as a as an overall look. So I'm I'm happy with the way the icicle turned out. Yeah, I mean I'm I mean I'm biased. So because I was like involved in the creation of the color, but this is one of the few dice that even I, um, you know, let's see, kind of backtrack. A lot of times when I when I do, when we design a color that I'm involved with, which is like literally all of them, um, it's kind of fire and forget. You know, you kind of make the color and you never look at it again. Um, 
but the uh, um, but on this color, I've actually found myself like looking at it, looking at a die, turning around, and looking at all the various undulations, I might say, of the material inside. So that's very rare for me. So um, you know, so I think it's, it's, it should be a very nice color. Or, or it, way, it should sell very well. Um, so, anyways, the, the next one is is pink, which is you know basically the same color as before, but just with a luminary material. Um, and that's the thing I really think was really probably most impressed about these dice is that the luminary material in in the in the dice you really can't see it if you if you're not looking for it you will just think it's just like a normal die and nothing special. Um, I'm so I'm sort of kind of wondering how many people will buy the will buy a set of these because they like the borealis effect or whatever, not realize it's glow in the dark, and then all of a sudden like get a shock when they turn out the lights and say whoa this thing's glowing and such. So anyways, the, the next color is teal. And um, again, you know, it looks more like light green, but it really is teal because it's just some of the borealis. It's really hard to get a, a good picture of the color. Um, then this color is sky blue, and then we have um, um, uh, the, the last one is uh, royal purple. Um, by the way, we went in this order because that's stock number order. Um, so uh, now on the old version, and and, and again. Um, uh, you know, royal purple is one of our better selling colors. I think it looks looks very nice. The, the luminary the luminary effect comes through pretty much better than I thought it was going to, considering the darkness of, of, of the dye itself. Um, so the uh, um, then the next panel is uh, showing what we still have in the old old versions. Now this was from the ten sixteen. Since then we've sold out of pink with silver and a royal purple gold. Guess what? We we thought we had two weeks, and actually. Last last Thursday, I had four in stock of the polyethylene sets, so I'm assuming that we're out of it by now. Um, and then the, the the light green with gold is probably down to like about a about a month and a half, I would say. Um, now on the um, now on the 10 to 10 sets and the 16 millimeter and the and the uh, 12 millimeter sets, so they're all pretty much the same. Although the royal purple gold is down about a like a week or week or so of supply. Um, I should point on the original smoke with silver down at the bottom. It says three plus months. Um, I'll, I'm going to talk more about this later, but um, but we may be running out of stock of, of the polyhedrals for a day or two. Um, there's more over there at the factory in Germany. We, we just have to get over. It's a we're out of the D20, and there's more over there, but we, we just have to get it over here. Um, so we may run out of stock. So if it runs out of stock, it doesn't mean that we're out of it forever. It's just a temporary thing. Um, the uh, um, other thing I was going to mention too um, is about the uh, the maple green with yellow. Um, now you notice that that's not a new. We had we didn't redo that one. Okay, the reason for it is that for some reason when you have some yellows and some um, oranges and some um, green material, special green, um, for it somehow cancels out the glow in the dark effect. So when, you, when we when we when we tried the luminary material in the maple green, you you did in the dark you just couldn't see it. Um, and I I try to remember my my physics, but it's something that it, I think that it, it the, the material um, absorbs the wavelengths of the um, um, of the of the glow in the dark material, um, and that's why we can't see it. So since there was no reason to you know switch it over because you can't see it. We decided not to. So um, you know that was that that color is just stay, is still available. It's just staying the same. Um, then on the other thing is that we we have because of the borealis dice were in the bags of fifty for this mainly for the signature uh, and the box of fifty as well as the best like the best of Chessy sampler. Um, we have a bit of an issue because how do you convert over the stock? Um, what we're we're planning on doing is just. Um, Doing like a mass replacement at some point in the future. Um, we're kind of we're, we're kind of low on some of the shapes of the bags of fifty and and, uh, and the boxes of fifty, and we have like about twenty left of the best of the Chessy samplers. So we may just run out of stock of them for a while to like let everyone kind of clear out the stock, and then at some point in the future, maybe at the end of the year, because it's just end of the year is a good time to do things like this. Um, is to just say okay from now on it's all with you know the, the it's all with the new material and we also might at the same time um, 
change the mix um, to include colors like the icicle and the new smoke. Um, and, you know, so we haven't really made any final decisions on that. But so right now we're just not really putting the, the luminary into the bags of 50. Um, that may change if, if we run out of the bag. Like right now we're out of the bag of 50 of the, of the D20 and signature. Maybe we'll start putting those um, into um, the bag of 50 and have it again. But we're probably leaning towards more of like the, the mass, you know, switch over uh, from one to the other. Um, I see how the, uh, the, the upcoming, so that's basically it for the uh, um, uh, Luminary Borealis. And the, hey Don? Yeah? While we have, uh, while we're still on the topic of Borealis, I okay. do have some questions related to that that's sure. have come up in the chat. Um, going back just a little bit, Michael Hong asks, will street dates be the way going forward for all new Chessex materials? Uh, yeah, that, that's the plan. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we've never done it before, so we, we don't really know how it's going to work for everyone. But uh, assuming, I mean, you know, it, this is kind of probably more dictated by our customers, the, the, the distributors, and anyone else, because we want to do, uh, we want to release this in a way that is most convenient for them as well as the retailers. And, and actually, the retailers I talked to, too, also said that they, they kind of like street dates because that way they can get it in, let everyone know that they're there. Um, some people say that they do, they display it to their customers in a lock glass case to let people know that, hey, this is, this, we can sell this on Friday, come back on Friday, you know, to get it. Um, so if it works out well, um, yes, I mean, you know, th there was no real reason for a release date versus a street date other than um, how it was always done in the past. So if people prefer the street date, um, then this would probably be what we'll do in the future. Yeah. Uh, and then Derek asks, uh, what does the display that comes with the sampler look like? Oh, it's the 29971 display that we, that um, the cardboard display, that is, which is now color. It used to be white cardboard with blue printing. Um, it's now color and it fits uh, 18 polyhedral sets. Okay. It's, it's the same ones you get with a 29910 or the 12 or 16, which is the best of Chessex sampler. Okay, great. Uh, and then Michael Hong also asks, uh, will retailers be allowed to ship out sets to folks ahead of the street date so customers who want it on street date can get their dice on street date? Um, that, that's, I don't think that's normally done, is it? Uh, not, not normally, no. Then, then, then I would say no. Um, yeah, because I know that, that, that um, for, the, the, for the few mailers that we get, we were going to be shipping them out on the on the twentieth. Yep. Michael also notes that the the luminary set sold fantastic for our store during the lab dice run. Oh, great! Yeah. Well, well then, well then, then people would be happy to know that on the uh, um, uh, nebula dice, um, those are well four of the colors were former lab dice colors. Um, one of them we I th I think that that I haven't I haven't seen the final production pieces yet. Uh, I know some are made, but um, uh, spring will is slightly changed. So those four had luminary material in it, um, and then actually no, five. And then we have a new color that are coming out with straight into the range, and that one. Um, oh, that's right. Five of them are, are former colors, and one of them is a new color, and they and they're all luminary. Yep. And then uh, he's got another great idea here that he he says use. Uh, they've been using one of their cash verification devices. To use the black light to show customers the black light effect. So, <laughs> if you if you have one of those in your store, you can use it. I, I went out and got a uh, a simple UV flashlight from right. one of the local vendors here, and and uh, so I use that as well to to look at the dice. Yeah, we we, we use those at, at 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 consumer shows. We were thinking about getting a a special UV light over these to like shine, you know, at shows. So that it would kind of show the glow of dark material, you know, all the time, and such. Yeah. Any, any other questions? That is it for questions so far. Uh, so if you want to jump back okay. into the list, okay. Free. Yeah, like I said on the nebula, um, there, it's there are f five colors of of lab dice. Although I think we're, we've improved spring. Spring was supposed to have a little more orange in it, but when they when they made the the last run, it didn't it didn't come through. So we're putting a little more orange in it. I think it's it makes it look a lot nicer. Um, and then on the Gemini, I have uh, four colors selected. Um, and uh, um, 
and we're, we're probably pulled two from the last uh, lab dice release, but there's another color that we're thinking about doing, but, but, but I, I would say five colors are set. We're just working on the, on the sixth one. They're starting to make them, but I have to say that, um, oh, sorry, the, the Nebula release, I think is gonna probably be February, March of next year. The Gemini, I don't really know because they have a slight problem in that the Gemini range is very popular as most people know. Um, but they don't, but they don't have a lot of machines, okay, to make the make the dice. So there's always kind of a trade-off between keeping the normal stuff in stock and making a new a new product. So they're they're trying to work a new product in, but I'm not really sure, you know, when it's going to be. But maybe let's say you know April, May, maybe June or whatever. It's it's kind of like that's always very really hard because it also um, people have to understand that these machines that they're making this material these dice with. Are old machines. It's a it's an old style machine that is not really made anymore because mainly because it's it's very inefficient for electricity, um, and electricity's you know power is expensive, and uh, um, um, so it's it's they're also very slow. Okay, that's the other thing about them is that they're much slower. So so the, so they don't make this machine anymore. So they're using the old machines and the Jedi machines that they're, they're very temperamental, and I'm always getting. Um, reports from them about, um, about, oh, we have two Gemini machines down <laughs> and they only have like like five, okay? So it's like, you know, you lose two machines and there goes 40% of your production capacity. So it's always very, really tough to tell um, um, when um, Gemini dice can, can actually get made. Um, so um, now I should also point out to everyone too that um, help is on the way um, because the, the factory in Germany that makes the Gemini, makes the Nebula, makes the Frosted, et cetera, um, they're building a new factory. Um, and uh, um, right now they're, they're really kind of like at their capacity. They're in like five locations throughout their village. Um, I mean, I don't really want to say it's a village, it's about 50,000 people, but they're, they're at five different locations and they have no space for the machines. So they're going to go from from um, 13 machines, one, three in total, to 30, three, zero, hopefully end of 2021, early part of 2022. Um, when that happens, it's gonna really increase the capacity and we'll be able to bring out a lot more new colors, plus do a lot of other things that I always wanted to do, but have not been able to because we've been constrained by the capacity of the factory. Um, so the, uh, um, um, the, the, then after the Nebula, they're going to start on the probably the, the, the next lab dice release, which will probably be out probably May or June of next year. Um, and uh, uh, right now on the the uh, lab dice three, um, there was uh, we still have in stock the mint green, white, um, red, white, and orange, purple. The other three colors sold out. Now you know. You know, all all dice are not created equal. Some just are more popular than popular than others. But I'm always amazed at how, like, when I give an order to the factory, I say I want X quantity of, of all these shapes and such. Okay, and they, they they do an estimate and such. Okay, and usually they're you know like 10% short on one or 10 or 20% over on another. But it always amazes me how they're always 10% short on the better selling colors and always over. On the less popular ones, um, and that's exactly what happened on the the Lab Three. Um, the reason we have a lot more, a lot of those left, uh, were partially because they didn't sell quite as well. But the really overriding factor is that in the case of Mint Green, we got like thousands more of that than we got of anything else. Um, you know, so it's just sort of like, oh well, Murphy's Law, right? Um, you know, so um, so. So, the, so the and then on the on the last lab dice release, we still have stock of, of all the colors. But you know, um, I think that um, that perhaps um, people order a little more than 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 the market can handle, mainly because of mainly because of, of just dice sales are lower because of COVID. Um, but by the same token, they're pretty good colors, and we don't have that much left of any one color. Um, and uh, um, for us, the, the slowest selling one has been the, been the heavy dice. But I think the reason for that is that people can't come in, feel them in their hands and realize how, how interesting they are. Uh, and that's really hurt their sales. Um, but hopefully by the time the next lab dice come out, we'll be 
a little more through this pandemic and things are get, getting a little bit more back to, to normal. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that if you saw them on my background here was a, our, our Mondo mat that we display, we use at shows. But next year is the 40th anniversary of the battle mat, um, you know, first being introduced to the market on, I think, I think it was May 22nd, 1980 uh, at a local show in, in, uh, um, 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 in, the, in the Bay Area called Grimcon. Um, so it's, you know, it, as, as if it, for people who are old like me, who might remember Edward Everett Dirksen. He was a senator from Illinois um, in, in the Johnson and Kennedy era. Um, and he had a quote that said that there is no force so powerful as an idea whose time has come. And uh, it kind of reminds me of, of, the, of the battle mat because um, you know, it, was, it was just a very good idea. And to get a little bit of, of background history on it, um, that what, ha what happened was that um, um, I was, I had my store um, back in 1980 uh, called Games of Berkeley. Um, and uh, uh, it just had its fourth anniversary this, this last year, or this year, I should say, because um, 2020 is not over yet. Um, and there was a, there was a person who used to sell chess books and equipment at, at tournaments. His name was Art Neal. And he suddenly passed away. And everyone used his vinyl chess mat as a vinyl chess mat. So Myself and Bill Lamb, who was one of the former owners of the Gambit, uh, where I first started working as a clerk before I started my store, and we decided to make chess mats um, to like fill that fill that need. Um, and then I remember, I still remember uh, now. Um, and we always thought, well, you know, we did the chess mat. Is there is, is there something we can do f using the, the the concept of the vinyl game mat for role playing? Okay, and uh, um, and. I still remember the day when Bill uh, came into the store and said, I think we have a product because he was the one who discovered that you could use overhead projection wire-based pens on the vinyl and wipe it off you know, thereafter. And that was a formation of the product. And uh, um, you know, we, we, we produced it. And I, I remember taking these, these mats to Origins 1980, which happened to be called Pacific Origins because it was in San Mateo, California, which was also the Bay Area probably one of the most disorganized origins there ever was, um, um, you know, but for us, I mean, that was a, that was a show where, where um, we didn't, no one could tell us where our booth was. Um, so we found an empty booth and we thought that's what it was, but there was no, there was no one around to, to confirm it. So we set up and the next morning we came in to start the, the show and all our product was on, was in the, it was in the aisle. <laughs> someone else had set up in their booth because that was their booth. Uh, they just hadn't shown up yet. And I remember that we just, you know, we there was no space for us. So we just asked the organizers, well, can we set up a table here in the aisle because it's pretty wide. It still, you know, maintains its 10 feet. And they said, well, sure, go ahead. And so so we set up there and started selling. And I remember at that show there were there were three hits as I remember. There was Car Wars from Steve Jackson Games because he was just getting started. There was Champions from Hero Games. And, and the battle mat. I think that we were the, like, you know, the, the three products that really were, that, that got people's attention. Um, and then about a year later, uh, Steve Lucky from Balboa Game Company kept bugging us saying that, you know, the battle mat's fine, but people wanted a bigger one. Um, and I said, yeah, well, you know, maybe he said, you know, maybe, you know, three, but three feet by four feet. And I said, yeah, but Steve, you know, I mean, at that time the battle mat was $8 uh, retail. And we said, Steve, it's going to be like eighteen dollars. You know, are people going to spend that much money for a for, for a mega for a, what we later called a mega mat? And uh, you know, after hemming a hong, we finally did what Steve Steve requested, and you know, the rest is history type of thing. Then later on, people said, "Well, we would like to have something that fits on our four by eight table." And I said, "It's going to be over a hundred. It's going to be have to be well over a hundred dollars." He said, "Yeah, well, we don't care." So I said, "Okay." So we finally did the, the Mondo mat, and again, the rest is history. So, uh, um, you know, like um, Dirksen said, you, you know, um, a good idea can, can be very powerful. Um, and uh, um, obviously, 40 years later, they're still selling reasonably well. So it, it must have been a pretty good idea uh, that has also has lasted. Um, so I guess that's about all that I have. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for, for listening to, to my ramblings. <laughs> And also, obviously, 
uh, for your support in, in purchasing our, our products. Great. Uh, I do have just one round, real quick correction to the slides. And let me just share that real quick here so that people can see it. And that is uh, that the, the uh, code for the sampler was incorrect on the first go around of the slide. I've since fixed it, but it is uh, 29917, not 28817. So that if anybody is looking for that sampler, this is the correct code to use, CHX29917. It looks, it looks kind of like you've, you've, created, you've created a new stock number. You have to put in your system. If they order a 28817, yeah. <laughs> I may just go back and edit the video so that you know, there's no evidence. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't. I, I, I'm surprised I got by me. Oh, well, you know. It happens. Uh, and then there, there is also another side question, which I think is a, is a good suggestion. Uh, Michael says, Q Workshop has made a DICE advent calendar that sold out for us before we even got it in stock. And would Chessex be looking at something similar in the future? I think, I think that is a great idea for, uh, for a DICE manufacturer to do something like that. Oh, yeah. No, we, we definitely thought about that. But, the, but again, the issue, the issue has been um, capacity. Um, you know, I mean... Yeah. I mean, the, 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 in, in 2020, we actually are able, we're actually able to get out, I think really three releases, um, two lab dice and the, and the Borealis, and we had the Nebula coming in, not that much, um, you know, um, behind it. And part of the only reason why we get these out was because the, uh, um, our, our sales overall for dice have, have, have dropped because dice are, let's, let's face it, dice are an impulse buy, and when people can't go by stores, there's not as much impulse buying happening. Um, so the whole, I think the whole dice category is down a bit from, from the past. Um, and with this slightly being down, I was able to shift some of their capacity over to making, um, um, over to making, um, uh, you know, more, more, you know, more new dice. Uh, not, maybe not so much in the case of Borealis because we would have made those anyways. Um, but, um, but certainly in the case of, of, of everything else. So I'm just waiting. I mean, when the, when, the, when the factory was sold back in 2018 to the new owners, within four or five months, they talked about building a new building. And they, they said that they would have, it'd probably have it done by maybe the end of 2019, maybe the early part of 2020. Well, now they're, they're, they, haven't, they haven't broken ground yet. They only have one more hurdle um, with the government to get through, um, and that's only a pretty much a minor um, formality at this point, to where they can start to break ground. Um, and so it's something that um, that you know is this this new factory being um, put back has been kind of annoying because I want to get going on these things. But we have so many things planned um, that I don't really want to get into now. Once they have more capacity, um, you know, there's. I mean, there's, um, um, you know, all sorts of, um, um, you know, all sorts of, of like new products, specialized dice, um, et cetera, that we, re that we really want to do. But it's always been, I've always had the, the, the philosophy that it's better to keep the existing products in stock than to, than to run out of stock of those for a new product. Um, and because I, because these, now maybe maybe Scott's different, um, but when I was a distributor, the thing that I hated the most was filling it out of stock from a publisher, um, because you did all the work to get someone to buy the product, and then all and you even put it on the invoice, and then you don't get the profit from um, from from being able to sell the product because a publisher doesn't have it in, in stock. So uh, uh, that I used to find that incredibly annoying. That like for White Wolf. You know, they'd be coming out with two or three new supplements from Vampire, but they couldn't keep the Vampire, the Masquerade, basic book in stock. Um, and it got so bad that when I was a distributor, I, I kept, I would keep up to five, I, I would order up to five months worth of inventory, which just kind of killed my cash flow. But it was better than that than, not, than constantly running out of stock of it. Um, and it's something that, uh, um, that, from that experience, I really try to keep our main range in stock at all times. Uh, oh, that's right. There's one thing I forgot to mention. Um, um, we had um, talked about some of the things about the, the the factory being kind of like in five different locations. Um, 
they, um, we have some colors that, are dis that we discontinued. We told the factory we're discontinuing, we're not going to make any more. And those were, um, those were Festive Green, Festive Rio, um, um, Ghostly Glow Orange, Lustrous Dark Blue, and, um, and also the, uh, I knew about the smoke, okay, the, the Boreal smoke. Uh, about a month ago, um, I get an email from them that says, oh, um, we found some mixed material for, for those colors. Um, could you place another order to like, so we can use this up? And so I, I went ahead and did that, okay. I thought that they could make it in time um, to make enough material or make enough of the dice so that we wouldn't run out of stock. But it hasn't really happened. And uh, we haven't run out of Lustrous Blue. No, we didn't run out of Lustrous Blue. We did run out of Festive Rio. We are now out of Festive Green. We've gotten Festive Rio and uh, Lustrous Dark Blue back in stock. We're almost out of smoke, but I do have um, some over there when we do our next air freight shipment from them. Um, we'll, I'll get them in. So, so they may run out of stock for a bit and then come back. I think we're okay on the, on the orange. So in those five colors, we may be saying they're discontinued, but they are coming back but it's only because they found all this material. Um, and so we'll probably have them in stock for another six or eight months. Um, but if you notice that, that we run out of stock, um, you know, and, and Scott runs out of stock, though, you know, just keep on reordering, they will come back. Okay, if you want the stock numbers, I think the stock numbers are what, uh, 27428, uh, 27445, 27449, uh, 27, um, for um, eight six, and I think that the glossy glow, glossy glow is two seven five two three. Okay. So those are just kind of one of those things where, you know, these things happen, and I can understand. You know, they. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that they really don't want the factory, really doesn't want um, people to know how they make the dice, which is understandable because it is kind of a you know secret. Um, um, that would be a great place to do a tour. Because I got to tell you, their factory is a true rabbit warren. Um, it's been a building that's been added on three or four times, and that's just one of the building. And they have like four satellite locations, you know. So I'm sure everyone over there is going to just love the fact that. Um, oh, and by the way, they're on three different levels, and there's no elevators, and and you can't use a pallet jack or anything like that in their in their place because everything's so packed together. Plus also too, when you go from one room to another, quite often there's like, like a step. So everything, all the dice that are made have to be moved by hand um, and up and down, you know, being carried by people. So that was fine when this, the factory was built in like 1950, but you know, 70 years later, it doesn't work quite, it's not quite as efficient as it used to be because labor is a little more expensive in Germany now than it was right after World War II. So anyways, um, I guess I, I, I guess now I'll stop rambling on. <laughs> That's a wealth of wealth of information and history on on the company and on uh, the process that you're going through. So uh, I, I don't see any additional questions in the in the chat window. So if anybody does have questions, go ahead and pop those in now. Um, otherwise, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and call it. Remember that the, the street date for these eight colors is the 20th of November. Uh, those are shipping out. Um, we are getting them in our warehouses now, so we'll have them in time for uh, shipping out to make sure that everybody gets them in time for the street date. And uh, we just ask that you, of course, honor that street date, make sure that you're uh, holding back on, on the product so that you can make it available all at the same time so everybody's got a, a good chance at it. Uh, otherwise, I want to really you know, thank Dawn for coming out, for taking the time out of your day to be here with us. Uh, we really appreciate the updates, appreciate all the information coming up. Uh, one question I did have is uh, on the Gemini new product that's coming out, when do you expect that is, you're gonna see that releasing here? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking like May or June, okay? May or June. Yeah, but like I said, it's really hard to tell because I mean, you know, because the, the, the capacity of the machines are so limited. And, and, and we may start having some problems on the 16 millimeter um, Gemini because they've kind of fallen behind on production of those. And uh, we, we still have them, but, um, you know, what, what, I mean, 
I try, I try to keep like, well, when I place an order, I order up to 30 months, like two and a half years. Um, and so normally I get product in about maybe six to eight months to a year before it runs out. But on a lot of the Gemini colors, I'm down to like a three month supply. So I know the factory is working on them. Um, so, you know, so I'm hoping to, to get them back in, um, you know, before we, we, before we run out and, and, we, and we probably should. So again, it's all a capacity issue. If, if we have the capacity, if they have the capacity to make the, the dice, um, they will, you know, they, they have orders for them and such, but I tell them do existing product. Cause when I place an order, I give them a priority list and I sort of say, okay, this have a three month supply, this have an eight month supply. And I say to them, you know, as long as you've made everything that I have l less than an eight month supply, then you can make the new, new stuff. They don't always follow directions, but generally, generally they do. Um, and I, but because they don't like me yelling at them because they made a die that I had 18 months supply. <laughs> you know? um, um, and uh, um, so that, that, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, it could, it, I'm hoping for a little earlier because I do want to get these out because, because, I think some of these colors are really nice. Um, and, and I've been sitting on them for probably about a year and a half now. <laughs> you know? um, uh, we decided to do the lab dice rather than these, but um, um, so, so I, I do definitely want to get them out, but it's just, it's a matter of capacity, really just pure and simple. Um, and, it, and it was really kind of amazing because you, I go over there and they have a warehouse, they have, like I said, they have 13 machines running. They have a warehouse with about 20 to 25 injection molding machines ready to be set up, but they can't because they just don't have the space for it. Um, um, and they don't want to set, I mean, I mean, these are, um, when I go to, when I go to, a, I've, I've been to a couple of these injection molding uh, uh, trade shows. Um, there's uh, in, 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 in Germany and uh, um, One's called K and one's called uh, Fukuma or yeah, Fukuma, Fukuma, I think it's. Um, and uh, um, and they they set these machines. They're about maybe fifty feet long, and they're running. You know, they show people how they work and stuff like that. And I've been told that they start setting the machines up about three or four weeks before the show, just for like a five day show. And they then it takes another three weeks to tear them down, and you know they don't they, they they don't want to try to set this up into a, a separate facility where they have a separate staff and such because it's very expensive to get them set up and they say well you know in the past they were supposed to have a new factory by now um, so they didn't want to set up for like you know six months you know and so they haven't increased their capacity as far as as the molding machine goes and and it seems like then I said I, I suggested them well you know it's perhaps going to take longer. Why don't you set them up? Oh, but you know, it's not gonna be that long. And then next, then two months goes by. And instead of being two months closer, you're only one month closer, you know? So, you know, the old saying about, I wish I knew then what I know now. Okay. And they may have actually set those machines up and, and been running them, but because the, the new factory has been so imminent, they haven't wanted to do it. But it's really pretty amazing seeing all, all these machines just sitting around. Um, and, and they're all old, like I said, they're all old machines. They're all used. Um, um, you know, buying various sources because they, they, they bought them as people got rid of them because like I said before, they're very inefficient for power and they're also only about maybe half to two thirds the speed of the new machines. Um, and so between those two things, these things are, are somewhat a drug on the market, but, but they're probably, but they're not so much a drug anymore because there's not that many left. They've, all, they've almost all been replaced. Um, so, so the machines are there, it's all ready. It's just something that, um, you know, I'm just kind of like, twiddling my thumbs, you might say, for the next year, year and a half until they can get these things going. And you know, in between the advent um, calendars and uh, um, some other things that we, we, we thought about as well as, um, 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 as, well as uh, um, specialty dice, um, you know, there are just so many things out there that, that we want to do, but we just have not had the, uh, uh, the capacity to get them done. You know, it's been kind of frustrating, but Oh well, you know, life could be worse. Um, you know, it could be that no one wanted our dice. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, there is one more question that came in um, about the large size D six. 
and other unique items at conventions, uh, but rarely seeing them in distribution. Is that something that will be available to gin, uh, to distribution eventually? I can say that we do have the 30 millimeter D6s listed on our site. Uh, we do try to keep those available, uh, make the larger ones yeah, as the, available as possible. Yeah, the, the real, well, we're, we're not doing the 20 mils anymore because quite obviously they just didn't sell very well. Um, the real problem with the big dice is that they're, they're expensive. Um, the, the story goes is that, I mean, I didn't do them for, for like the 50 mils and the 30 mils for a very, very long time uh, because they're just so damn expensive. Um, because like a 50 millimeter 20 side die on our normal margins should be about a 27 to $30 retail. And no one's gonna pay that much price for a 50 millimeter six side die. Um, so, but what happened was that every single time I visited the factory, the, the general manager kept on bugging me about those dice. Because he said, oh, but they're so pretty. And yes, they are very pretty, but they're so expensive, I can't resell them. Um, so eventually I got tired of him whining about me not carrying them. So I decided, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll order them and then we'll, we'll sell them at conventions only. Uh, because there, when, I mean, you know, those dice cost the, like the 50 mils, cost me about right around $8 a piece. And we sell them at shows for 12. And I think we have like an $18 retail on them. So when we sell them to a, to re, even to a retail store, we're not really making you know, any money on them, but I, I really don't care because they are very pretty and they are a nice showpiece. Um, so it's kind of like a lost leader. I don't really mind it. Um, and the 30 mils are the same way. I, I haven't really looked at it, but, but when we sell it, the dice to the distributor like Scott, we may actually be losing money on them, but it's only a few pennies. So it's not, a, it's not that big a deal. Um, so the real, the real problem with those is, is a cost. And it's the reason why we probably will never do like a 34 millimeter Gemini or a Borealis, you know, die, a big D20, because it, it gets kind of hideously expensive. Um, the, the factory said, you know, when they might be able to do some things on it to like get the price down a bit. So we might be able to do a, a big 20 sided die in like a scarab or whatever so at some point in the future. Um, but you know, but that is like, you know, not very likely. It's like, I, I don't really like doing things that, that the, the distributors and retail stores can't carry. I mean, someone suggested that we do like a Kickstarter on these 34 millimeter D20s or whatever and other materials. But I really don't like doing that because I, I don't like, like undercutting the retail stores. Um, so we haven't really done it. We haven't really done it mainly for, for, for that reason. Um, so it's just, that for this material, making it bigger um, makes the die get kind of expensive because the material itself is kind of expensive, um, especially the Borealis. <laughs> um, um, the material that causes the Borealis is really, is really hideously expensive. expensive. Um, but uh, um, so, so when you get a bigger die, and also the, the other problem they have too is that on the, like the 50 millimeter D6, they say they have about 25 to 30 percent rejects. So when it gets bigger dice, they also have a lot more problems with the molding. Um, so that has to be factored in, into the cost. Yeah. Uh, one other question about uh, Gemini Red Green and whether or not that's out of print or is that still available? Oh, that, 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 well, we, we, just, we just ran out of the polyhedral set, but that was a discontinued color and that's now is out of print. You know, I mean, that's really kind of sad because I really like the color, but man, it just didn't sell <laughs> compared to the other ranges, you know, and, and we have new general colors coming out. And I, I mean, I would like to make a, you know, I, I have nothing against making our Gemini range be like, you know, 80 different colors, but I think at some point we would start cannibalizing our own sales. And, you know, I would, I might be getting a, a like a, a, a nasty email from Scott saying, Don, the Gemini range is too big, make it smaller. So we're kind of keeping it about 30 colors. Um, so when you come out with new colors, we gotta start working on, you know, getting rid of, of um, not really getting rid of it, but selling out. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't desecrate the, the slower selling colors, you know. I mean, they're, they're not bad dice, they're just not as popular. You know, it doesn't make, it, make them bad or whatever, but anyways, um, so um, uh, it's like that, that we, we that's been, that's been one of the colors that has been on the edge. And it's been like, because when we figure out the Gemini range, we figure out the top 26 colors. We started adding some of those colors into the, uh, um, into the, uh, um, um, the, key, the, the class of the keeping in stock, not, 
now called the classic range. So you can span out to 30 and such. But the but the, but in this case, the real reason why we dis, reason why we discontinued those colors of Gemini out of there is simply it gets back to capacity. Would we I'd rather support a, a color that's not selling particularly well, um, and then and 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 um, and then be able to bring out a new color, than or should I support a, a slow selling color and not come out with a new color that probably will sell better in the future. Now, when the factory gets built, okay, um, and they have to increase their capacity, that the, the red green is definitely a color that we may bring back. Because as I said before, I think it's a very nice color and I like it, um, but it just hasn't, you know, it just, you just look at the sales overall of everything and sort of say, well, you know, you gotta make a, a cut someplace. You know, it's, it's the same thing as if, it's, it's kind of like, I feel like it's like, it's like a football team, you know, you, you start with 75 players in camp and you got to get down to 50. Well, you know, some people, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with them, you know, but you just can't, you, you got to make a cut sometime, you know, it's just a square business decision, but that, but, you know, but that is a color that, that may sometime come back in the future if there's more capacity. Great. All right. Uh, that is, that's all the questions. So I think we've, We've got it covered pretty well. Yeah, uh, retailers. I hope I haven't been working <laughs> too many people with my long answers. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, so so retailers expect uh, the Borealis Luminary Dice on your orders to be coming uh, here in in time for the release date of 1120. And uh, we, we really appreciate you taking street the time date, out of release date. date. Street date, not release date. Did I say release? I meant street date. Yeah, <laughs> street date of 1120. Street date of 1120. So there you go. Uh, all right. So thank you all again for coming. We, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your questions and interaction. And I know there's a, a lot of good information that was that was passed along and, and exchanged here in, in the chat window. So we appreciate that. Uh, Don, we want to thank you for your time. Oh, Once again, well, thank you for being here. Thank you very much for your time and, and making all those wonderful panels. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. I'll, now that I got it right. So I got it fixed. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, go ahead and, and once again, hit that like and subscribe that you'll get notifications of new videos as they come out. Uh, and you'll be able to watch those. If you're a retailer and you want to sign up for these webinars to watch them live, the link is down in the YouTube video as well. So once again, thank you all for your time. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next time as well. So have a great rest of your day.